and fellow devotees of the Lord, Namaskars to every one of you. It gives me great pleasure to see young men and women attending the satsang. I firmly believe that satsang is good for all ages, all stages of a man's life. People often make the mistake of assuming that satsang is the prerogative of older people who have more or less withdrawn from active life and wish to have nothing further to do with the world and its affairs. On the other hand, satsang can teach all of us, young and old alike, how to lead our worldly life and conduct our worldly affairs in the right spirit, in the right manner and with the right attitude. We would do well to remember that God's grace is not akin to a pension fund reserved for senior citizens. It is grace abounding for us all now and forever. We do not have to be 65 years old to attain God's grace. It came to Bhakta Parlada when he was still a child. It came to Dhruva when he was still a little boy. Age is not a factor that determines our link with God. Some time ago, 
a young man came to meet me. He had been attending satsang quite regularly. He was intelligent and well read and even in his young age he had a yearning to follow the spiritual path. He told me that he regularly used to practice the discipline of mauna, observing silence as part of his spiritual sadhana. In the stillness of silence, he would ask himself many questions and seek answers to them in his deeper consciousness. But there was one particular question in his mind which bothered him a great deal. This often happens in life. Doubts and questions arise in our minds from time to time. These questions often confuse us and slow down our spiritual progress. This young man was troubled by a question. He asked me, in the satsang we are told time and again that we have to put in our efforts to achieve self-realization and that this involves a lot, lot of hard work, discipline and self-control. On the other hand, we are told that for our spiritual progress, the grace of God is necessary. Could you please explain to me what is it that I need the most, my own effort or the grace of God? The answer to this question can be found in our sacred scriptures. In the Bhagavad Gita, we are told that nothing will happen on this earth without the grace of God. No amount of hard work, no amount of sincere effort will bear fruit without the grace of the Guru. No matter how great your tapasya, no matter how regularly and religiously you chant the name divine and worship God, you will achieve nothing without the grace of God. Until and unless we are blessed with His divine grace, we cannot even touch His lotus feet. The Atman chooses whom it wills. The young man said to me, my confusion is confounded. When on the one hand you ask us to put in effort and on the other hand you insist that nothing can happen without God's grace and that this grace is showered on those whom He chooses, does God have His favorites? Is He partial to some of us? My friends, I think in the interest of many young people who aspire to follow the spiritual path, this is a fundamental question which needs to be addressed. A sister whom I knew used to laugh away the whole issue. She would often say, why put in effort? Let the grace of God be bestowed on me as and when He chooses. In the meanwhile, I shall continue to eat, drink, sing, dance and be merry in this beautiful world which he has created for me to live in. Why put in any effort and yearn for liberation before my appointed time arrives? Such forwardness can only lead to unhappiness and frustration. He knows best and his grace will come to me at the right time and in the right season. God will make me a monk without earning monkhood. His divine grace will reward me with sainthood without working for it. This seemed to be the philosophy of our life. There are people who keep working for the spiritual progress irrespective of its hardships or hindrances. They work for this progress without any expectations. Whatever they do, is out of love for the Lord. It is a dedicated life which they choose to lead, a life of utter devotion. On the other hand, there are some who give up their efforts easily and blame God for His partiality. They complain that they have given up all enjoyment of clubs, cinemas, TV, discos, but still do not find favor with God. Frustrated, they abandon 
this path. Let me illustrate this with a beautiful parable from Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa. It is said that Sri Ramakrishna was one day passing by fields of wheat grains. He was accompanied by a few devotees. They saw some farmers tending to the fields, looking at them. Sri Ramakrishna said to his disciples, Do you see those farmers working on the fields? There are two types of farmers. Those who have inherited the field from their forefathers and continue to cultivate it. Such farmers will continue to till the land and plough it and cultivate it even if they go through a season of drought or crop failure. They continue to plough the field because it has been bequeathed to them by their ancestors. The second type are farmers who will plough the field and cultivate it as long as it yields good crops and is profitable for them. But they will abandon it if there are one or two seasons of crop failure. Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa then said to his disciples, you must be like the farmers of the first type. You must continue to put in your efforts. You must continue with your sadhana and your quest will be rewarded. Do not despair thinking that your effort will be wasted. Your efforts will definitely be rewarded when God showers his grace on you. A grain of grace is enough for me, O Lord. Let me have just one grain of thy grace. This one grain comes unexpectedly. A saint tells us how he overcame despair and frustration in his quest. He says, one day I was tired of working. I felt despondent. At that time I reminded myself, dear one, what do you need? What kind of results do you expect from your efforts? If you feel that you are not rewarded for your efforts, then do not despair. You want to earn the grace of God, which has always been with you. You are like a tiny fish in an ocean, which dances on the waves, drinking its waters. Then suddenly, the fish begins to feel afraid. It imagines that it is drinking so much of water of the ocean, that the ocean will soon dry up. How can one fish dry up the waters of the ocean? You are like a rat who lives in a tiny hole inside the warehouse of food grains and lives off the inexhaustible supply of spilt grains on the floor of the warehouse. And then it begins to fear that by eating food grains every day, it may exhaust the entire stock of food grains in the warehouse. How can a single rat finish off the food grains of a large warehouse. You are like a man who is climbing a mountain and begins to worry that every day he takes so much of oxygen from the environment that it could lead to exhaustion of oxygen from the environment. How can you exhaust the air? The same way the grace of the Guru, the grace of God is infinite and cannot be exhausted. God's grace is everywhere. We only have to avail of it. In life we do go astray and commit many sins. But there are times when we are saved from committing a mistake. There is a mystical Shakti, an unseen force, which prevents us from committing that sin. It is the Shakti of God's grace. It is the grace of God which is protecting all of us and taking care of us. It is natural for us to ask the question, if God's grace is so abundant, then why should we work for our self-realization? On the other hand, if we can make progress by sheer hard work, then where is the need for the grace of God? 
this question would not trouble you if you understood that you are not apart from God. You are a part of his creation. He lives in you as he lives in every aspect of the created world. The bestower of the grace and the seeker of grace are not separate from each other, but surrounded by the veil of Maya, blinded by the ego sense, we fail to see the union of the over soul and the individual soul. We labor under the illusion of separation from the source. The bestower of grace and the seeker receive and the and the seeker, the receiver of grace are not two different entities. We yearn to have grace and we pray to a higher power to bestow the grace. We make a distinction between the seeker and the sought and therefore arises the problem of separation. Who is God? Who is the seeker of the grace? It is I. In reality, I is only an ego and it is this ego which tries to give us a separate identity. It is ego which separates us from others. A sense of separation is born of this ego sense. The ego separates us from others and it is this ego which seeks God's grace. The truth is God's grace is always there. It is showered on all of us. But because of our sense of separateness, we feel the need for grace. Grace is like sunshine. When the sun shines, its energy is universal. And yet some birds blossom and others fade away. Those birds which fade away are the ones who have not learned to absorb the sunshine within. In other words, the birds are reluctant to receive the sun's energy. We have to be receptive. We have to be receptive to grace. The grace of God is all abounding. It is everywhere. All we have to do is to be receptive to it. Take the example of a room which has doors and windows, but all of them are shut. Even when the sun shines bright, the room remains in darkness. On the other hand, the room which keeps its doors and windows open is flooded with sunshine. We too should keep the windows of our hearts and souls open and allow the sunshine of grace to flow in. Look at the rain. There are people who hold an umbrella to protect themselves and hence do not receive the heavenly abundance of rain. On the other hand, there are those who let go of their umbrellas and enjoy the bounty of rainfall which the heavens ascend. We should also do away with the umbrella of the ego which covers us and prevents us from receiving the grace of the Guru. We cannot achieve self-realization only through personal efforts, because in doing so we are only giving a lift to our ego. Once the veil of the ego is removed, awareness will dawn. And what I was searching is there with me and within me. When the ego goes, God glows. It is an automatic process. Hence the question of God's favoritism or partiality in giving grace does not arise. All that is needed is to erase the ego. We should continue to put in efforts without expectation of any reward. Our nights should be spent in a dialogue with God and our days should be spent in the service of the poor and broken ones. And surely one day our ego will disappear and enlightenment will dawn on us and we shall realize that what we were seeking is within ourselves. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti
To awaken the divine in ourselves, make use of the books written by revered Dada J.P. Vaswani. We also have monthly magazines, CDs and cassettes available at Geeta Publishing House, 10 Sadhu Vaswani Path, Pune 411-001. The telephone number is 020-400-64450. Fax 020-2612-7474. Our email is g underscore ph at readifmail.com. Our website www.sadhuvaswani.org.